Mayor Pro Tem Tran. Here. And Mayor Jones. Here. And Council Member O'Neill is absent tonight. All right. Can we have the invocation, I believe, by Matt? Right. And then followed by Pledge of Allegiance from Council Member Bradigan. Can you lead us? Yes, please prepare yourself according to your faith. Dear Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to gather to consider city matters before the council tonight. Tonight, we pray for reverence and discerning hearts. We ask for your grace as we honor those who kindly invest of themselves in our community to make it better each and every day. And Lord, we ask that you continue to give the mayor and city council, city leaders and staff wisdom so that they may clearly see Garden Grove's needs today in order to provide for and revel in Garden Grove's tomorrow. We ask this in your name. Amen. 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 Everybody, please place the flag, hand over heart, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I would just like to note for the record that uh, Council Member John O'Neill is not with us tonight. He's up doing the good work that he does in Sacramento and um, we'll miss tonight's uh, meeting. So we consider it kind of an excused absence. Thanks. Um, with that, let me hand it over to Chair Wynn for the, Chair Wynn Penalosa for the Housing Authority. Um, Madam Clerk, may we please call roll? Commissioner Dovin. Present. Commissioner Jones? Here. Commissioner Klumpenstein? Here. Commissioner Tanwin? Here. Commissioner Tran? Here. Vice Chair Bradigam? Here. And Chair Kim Wynn Pinalosa? Here. And Commissioner Beckles and Commissioner O'Neill are absent tonight. Moving right along, is there anyone here wishing to speak to the public during oral communications? Seeing none, and I have no cards, I'll move on to consent. We have two items for consider of under consent. I'll second. Thank you. Please take the vote. Commissioner Dovin? Yes. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner Klovenstein? Yes. Commissioner Tan Wynn? Yes. Commissioner Tran? Yes. Vice Chair Bradigam? Yes. And Chair Kim Wim Pinaloza? Yes. Motion received, seven yes votes. Thank you. Moving on to public hearings, we have item 3A, adoption of the annual plan for fiscal year 2024 for the Garden Grove Housing Authority. I'll open the public hearing. Do we have any cards? Anyone wishing to speak? Should I close the public hearing and then move on to the report or hear the report first? The report first. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Good e evening, Madam Chair, members of the Commission. As the, cl uh, the item before you is the 2024 annual plan for the Section 8 Choice Housing Voucher Program. The plan is a comprehensive guide to the Housing Authority policies, operations, and strategies in meeting local housing needs and goals. The Housing Authority is required to submit the plan to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, or HUD, by April 15th. In 2023, the Housing Authority received a CMAP, which stands for Section 8 Management Assessment Programs, score of 100%. CMAP is a combination of self-audit and data submission to HUD that measures the performance of a Housing Authority. A score of 100% qualifies the Garden Grove Housing Authority as a high-performing agency. As such, we are only required to submit a streamlined format of the annual plan. A resident advisory committee comprised of six tenant participants in the Housing Choice Voucher Program have reviewed the plan. As indicated in attachment A of the plan, none of the members had any substantive changes to the plan. The public hearing has been properly noticed and was published on January 3rd and 10th. It is recommended that the Housing Authority Commission take the following actions. Conduct the public hearing, and then adopt the 2024 annual plan, and authorize the executive director to certify the annual plan. That concludes my report, and I am available if there are any questions. 
colleagues, are there any questions? I don't, I don't really have a question, but I do have a comment. Um, you, you know, the housing authority is actually one of the shining stars in Garden Grove, and it has been for a while. Um, the only real criticism I've seen over the last couple years is how long the waiting time is when you apply. And I had one lady who was coming to me, and she was in tears. She'd been waiting for 17 years. And, uh, you know, that, that that's crazy. It really kind of is. And, and I get we're limited in our resources, and we have to prioritize and that kind of thing. Um, but I, I do think maybe next year we should adopt a goal um, in the plan. Um, where we try to get that number down to maybe 10 years or, you know, incrementally get it down um, if possible. I know it's going to take some creative thinking and whatnot, but, uh, you know, maybe get it down to 12 years and then if we can get it down to 10 years, then follow, you know, however. But anyway, just food for thought. With that, I'll make the motion. Second. Before we vote, I just wanted to make a comment. Um, I do want to commend former Housing Authority, I don't remember his title, but Danny Huynh, because I know uh, within our two terms, there was thousands on a list and they went through and they updated it and they shortened that list. The list is unfortunately something that we can't dictate the timing on because it has to live its life out for the individual who has that voucher. Um, so we're at the mercy of those with the vouchers and the federal government, not necessarily we dictate that timeline. So the best I think that maybe staff can do is to continue to revisit that wait list, update that information and ensure that the individuals on that list, in fact, still are waiting and want the voucher. And if not, then remove them and, and open it up at a point in time when we have available vouchers. But um, I, I just want to make that note for the public that we can't really control that timeline as far as decreasing the amount of time someone waits. It's just the nature of the vouchers and our our authority is limited there. Um, and Sheriff Rampinolosa, before you take any motions, it'd be appropriate to ask if there's any uh, anyone who wishes to speak. If not, you can close the public hearing and then you can then, well, go on to Is there anyone from the public wishing to speak on this item? Colleagues? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing and we can move on to the vote. Commissioner Dovin? Yes. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner Klopfenstein? Yes. Commissioner Tan Nguyen? Yes. Commissioner, Commissioner Tran? Yes. Vice Chair Breidigam? Yes. And Chair Kim Nguyen Pinalosa? Yes. Motion received, seven yes votes. Moving on, are there any matters from commissioners? Seeing none, we will adjourn this meeting into our next meeting for Tuesday, April 23rd at 5.30 p.m., switching it back over to city council and the mayor. Thank you. All right, we will reconvene um, City Council. Before we go to presentations, I'd like to um, pull forward items 3A and 3B from consent and take action on those. So if I could pull those forward, can I ask for, as they pertain to the presentations? I move it, second it, yeah. got it. Okay, call the vote. <laughs> Motion received six yes votes. And motion received six yes votes for item 3B. All right, thanks for that. We'll go back then to presentations, item 1A. Item 1A is a community spotlight in recognition of Joe Hammer for being named Cypress College 2024 Americana Awards Garden Grove Citizen of the Year. And Mr. West is here to give that community spotlight. Yes, uh, this evening the Garden Grove City Council pays tribute to a very special individual whose constant and meaningful work in the community has earned him the prestigious title of Garden Grove Citizen of the Year from the Cypress College 2024 Americana Awards. And at this time, I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Joe Hammer up, if you wouldn't mind. 
and each Hi. year oh one second let, let him go, and go. yeah each Hi, year Joe. cypress college honors citizens from the eight surrounding cities that form the college's primary service area at their annual americana awards ceremony award recipients are chosen based on their humanitarian philanthropic and partnership efforts within their communities joe united states air force and army national guard veteran opened his moving and storage business California Relocation Services, Inc. in Anaheim in 1990, before moving the business to Garden Grove in 1995, where he retired in 2006. Inspired by his father and with his wife's encouragement to become more involved in the community, he joined the Garden Grove Chamber of Commerce, Commerce Healthy Aging Center Acacia, and Garden Grove Rotary Club. Joe currently serves as treasurer for the Garden Grove Rotary Club, and he plans to continue serving the organization to help support the Garden Grove community. Joe was awarded the Garden Grove Director of the Year in 2012 and 2015 and was named the 2023 Garden Grove Man of the Year from the Garden Grove Chamber of Commerce for his lifetime of volunteerism in the city. At this time, the Mayor and City Council would like to present Joe Hammer with a resolution in recognition of the selection as 2024 Garden Grove Citizen of the Year. The City congratulates him for his well-deserved achievements and commends his noble efforts in bringing out the best in our community. Yes, I'd like to say a couple words. I, I, the last awards, I, when I was here, I didn't say very much. But first of all, I want to thank Cindy for holding me up during the <laughs> Americana <laughs> Awards. I, I could have fallen off of that stage really easy. Uh, I'd like to thank the, this council and the citizens of a Garden Grove for the Americana Award. Uh, and also Cypress College, who uh, participated a lot and had a lot to do with it. it. Mentioned we moved our business here in 1995, and it was a very good time for us. We were immediately welcomed in this town. And uh, not only by the city leaders but at the time, but the d department heads, the police department, the fire department, we needed to have our building certified because we did business with the Department of Defense, moving uh, military personnel and storing mm -hmm. their goods. Fire Department was right on top of it with uh, uh, you know, the proper pressure for the uh, water and that sort of thing and, and the inspection they did. So it was mm -hmm. a very good move for our company and for me personally making a lot of new and now old time friends uh, and for a lifetime, I, I hope. Uh, first of all, I'd like to dedicate the, the award really to the many community service organizations in Garden Grove. They allowed me to participate and donate my time and be part of, of their programs which I wanted to do, and I thought they were good causes. And, so, and th finally, I want to thank this council and previous councils for the good judgment that they used in taking care of their citizens, which allowed these community organizations to flourish and to promote good living qualities in Garden Grove. So thank you very much. <laughs> Oh, you're such a wonderful man, and we're honored to have you here in our community. Okay, we already acted on um, item 3B, but may I ask uh, Rachel Rodriguez to come forward? 
Um, 3B was on our consent items, but this is adoption of a proclamation recognizing April as Donate Life Month. And we do have, I don't think there's anything, I just bring the, yeah. okay, we do have a something to present to you. <laughs> Thank you so much, um, Mayor and City Council. Um, I am honored to be the One Legacy Ambassador for the City of Garden Grove. Um, this has been my hometown for the last uh, two years. So um, I jumped at the chance to be able to be your ambassador for our organization. Um, this is a, a special month coming, which is April, which is declaring Donate Life Awareness Month. Uh, my direct connection is, this is baby Malachi, and um, he was my firstborn grandson, and uh, sadly and horrifically, he was a victim of homicide in 2011. And um, if it wasn't for the beauty of organ donation, um, I don't think I'd be able to stand here today to, um, to share his story. Uh, this is a very tender time for my family as uh, baby Malachi would have been 14 years old here in the, last, in the next couple of days. Mm. Um, so we're processing that. Um, baby Malachi um, went on to save the lives of four people. He saved a nine-month-old, a two-year-old little girl, a 21-year-old uh, young woman, and a 65-year-old uh, woman with his organs. Um, the fact that a baby could save the lives of two adults is because uh, the kidney actually grows to a recipient size. So that's how he, uh, our baby was able to um, save the lives of two adults. Um, he did save the life of a two-year-old little girl with his heart. Um, she spent the majority of her life in a hospital setting. This is actually her awaiting for her transplant mm -hmm. at the time. Uh, she was diagnosed with cardiomyopathy at a very young age and lived you know, her life in a, in a hospital setting when our baby's uh, heart became available to her. Um, here we are, fast forward, and you know, this little girl now is 14, and she's mm. running the Orange County Marathon. Wow. And you know, she's, she's doing some beautiful things alongside um, our grandson. And you know, she's just living this beautiful life she was never um, expected to live had it not been through the beauty of organ donation. So, you know, on, on the very last moments I had with my grandson, I promised him that I would uh, continue to share his story, even though, you know, tears would fall, um, because his life um, mattered and, and, and he was important. So I will forever be a bereaved grandmother, but for me, most importantly, um, I'm a grandmother with a purpose. And mm -hmm. so uh, I became a One Legacy ambassador to honor his story and to share um, the beauty of organ donation. So um, justice came in 2014, um, 25 years to life to the person that took his life. So uh, at least justice was served. Um, so, you know, it's just another door that closed in um, the horrificness of how he passed away. Um, he will always be yet another face in the ugliness of child abuse, but for me, more importantly, he is yet another face in the beauty of organ donation. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right, next we will go to oral communications. I do have a healthy handful of cards. Uh, Ruby Garcia.
Good evening, Mayor Jones, City Council, City Manager Lisa Kim and staff. Um, my name is Ruby Garcia, and I'm the founder of the Andy and 80, 80, 80, that's what I call Aiden, sorry, Aiden Safety Group to invite you guys all and also the community to our third annual Garden Grove event. Um, and it's, you know, uh, a good treat this year. We actually partnered with OCFA, so now they're integrating in part of the safety event where we show special needs families how to interact with PD and now interact with OCFA, um, firework safety in a way that, you know, we can communicate and explain to them how to be safe around them since it'll be on June 12th from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. here at the CMC. We look forward to seeing everyone. I'm gonna go ahead and leave the flyer here, but you're all welcome to attend. Thank you. Thank you. Julian De La O. Mayor and Honorable Council, thank you guys for having me tonight. Um, tonight I'm here to speak uh, or express my support for the Civic Center Revitalization pro uh, Project. Um, and with that, I just wanted to say thank you to the current council and past council members. I've lived in the city of Garden Grove for nine years now. Uh, this March is our anniversary. Um, and while living here, Garden Grove has offered my family and I um, stability, which has allowed my family to grow and thrive. And I am very appreciative of that and is why I support the Civic uh, Center Revitalization, including the Public Safety Building. Um, there's been many times where I've had to call on GGPD and they've always been very professional and have assisted our family in some nerve wracking moments, I have to say. Um, and then it will also, um, I think, um, help the cultural enrichment of the city. Um, two years after I moved to Garden Grove was the first time I ever tried pho. So, and uh, I'm very thankful for that. Yeah, yeah. So, um, with that being said, my name is Julian. Again, thank you, council. And then also city staff, because I know that city staff also takes a lot of heavy duty there too. So, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Claire Bescia. Good evening, and thank you for the opportunity to talk to you. Uh, my name's Claire Bischoff, and I was a teacher in Garden Grove for 25 years, and now I'm a naturalist for Sea and Sage Audubon, and I give school groups tours of the San Joaquin Marsh down in Irvine. I'm here to express my wish that we would keep the duck pond, and I, I know that a lot of people in this city have reasons for wanting to get rid of it, I would like to share my reasons why I, I would like to either keep it or else at least provide an alternative habitat for all of those birds. Um, I think that the duck pond is, is bringing us more beauty than we realize. Like the other day I was out walking in the morning and I saw a pair of mallards. They were flying and you know on a spring morning the sun is rising and you see two mallards flying together. And then I realized where were they flying? They were headed right towards that duck pond. And without that water, without that duck pond, we won't see that, that kind of beauty in the sky. Um, the other thing is, my neighbor and I, we were, we were talking about we're getting company this summer. I'm getting company from Minnesota. She's getting company from Australia. We were discussing where can we take them within Garden Grove to give them a little feel of our city. And I'm, not, I'm, I'm saying not run down to Seal Beach or Huntington or something, but Garden Grove. And you know, we both agreed the place we wanted to bring them was downtown and, and show them the duck pond. So it, it, I, I see it as a place of uh, beauty and tranquility and providing habitat for the birds that add to the, the beauty of our community. And it's, it, pardon? Oh. Um, I, I, think it, I think it might be a, a case of we don't know what we have until it's gone. It's mm -hmm. providing beauty and tranquility. We kind of take it for granted as we drive down Euclid. So uh, I, I do think that there are ways to maintain it. I, I think it's a very valuable installation. If we were to replace it, it would cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. And to just let it go is, seems to me a shame. Uh, you know, I'm from a city, Minneapolis, that has a lot of water features. So I, I believe that they can be maintained successfully. So anyways, I am 
just wanted to mark it in time that I supported the duck pond. I love the birds, and if we can't keep the duck pond, I really hope that we can provide an alternative habitat. But some, we need some place of that peace and tranquility and greenness downtown. Thank you. Randy Wetmar. Good evening, council members, staff. Uh, Randy Wetmore with Iron Workers Local 416. I'm here representing Local 416 and 433 and our brothers and sisters in the building and construction chains of Orange County. You know, projects like this that are coming along for your police department here, our residents that work, work right now, they're in San Diego, they're in LA, they're, you know, they're missing their kids sports games after school and stuff they're so they're trying to provide for their family i've tried getting a couple of guys here they're stuck had to work overtime in san diego but you know it's part of the nature of the beast but projects like this come along this is what they dream of it's you know it gives them peace of mind knowing hey i'm going to get off at four i can be to my daughter's softball game hey i'm not spending six hours in traffic I'm saving gas money this week, so hey, let's go out and eat dinner. You know, they, when they're working close to home, everything's a lot better for everyone. It's, it's a way to go, but I'm in full support of this project, and I know my brothers and sisters that can't make it here, they're for it too. Thank you. Thank you. Nicholas Nibbs. Mayor Jones, members of the council, my name is Nicholas Dibbs. I'm a teacher, educator. Um, I, I want to just say there's a difference between politicians and statesmen. We need more statesmen, not politicians, people who are willing to tell the truth, stand up for truth and justice, fairness, and to stop injustice. Injustice is wrong. Um, I. I'm uh, concerned, I just say the city of Long Beach passed a resolution asking for a ceasefire in Gaza. Our president is misleading our country and we're not doing too well. So Long Beach adopted a resolution on December 19th, the city of Stanton on December 12th, the uh, city of Pasadena on March 18th, and tomorrow the city of Bell is taking this up. Uh, this is an important issue. You've passed as a council back in December the declaration uh, uh, reaffirming the declaration UN Declaration of Human Rights. It's time for the members of this council to recognize that we do at the local level what goes on overseas affects us here. So please follow what other cities have done and, and put it on the agenda. I'm asking you to put it on the agenda. Colonel Lawrence Wilkerson worked as chief of staff to Colin Powell who is chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and became Secretary of State. The Colonel worked for, uh, Colonel Wilkerson worked for Colin Powell for many years as his right-hand man, and this is what he had to say recently. Come on. That's what they're doing, and now they're doing it because of October the 7th, they were giving that we had, they were given the wherewithal to do it wholesalely, and that's what they're doing. Well, let's talk about casualty figures here. Okay, so the colonel is saying on the recent episode of the Ralph Nader Radio Hour, by the way, the public and the council members need to go to democracynow.org and learn the truth and see what's going on, democracynow.org. But on the Ralph Nader Radio Hour, he's saying that his high-level contacts w with the IDF and in the American military establishment is that the Israelis want to exterminate the Palestinians or expel them and to take over Gaza, the West Bank, and East Jerusalem. That's what the goal is. How many more people need to die before this council will, somebody on this council will put it up on the resolution? Uh, like I said, other cities are doing this and it's time for this city to stand up for truth and justice and fairness and honor 
the UN Declaration of Human Rights, and your proclamation today on Arab American M Month, Palestinians are Arab Americans. Stand up for them. They have a right to exist. Issues of war and peace need to be taken up by the Council. Thank you. Andrew Gonzalez. Uh, good evening, Mayor, uh, Council, and staff. My name is Andrew Gonzalez. I am the Orange County representative for the LA and OC Building and Construction Trades Council, speaking in favor of item number 4A, the Civic Center Revitalization Project. Not only will this project bring um, a high quality project, really revitalize the area, bring state of the art uh, facilities for the police department and uh, future walking and uh, amenities for, the, for the, uh, the residents, but also create high paying good jobs. Um, with a project labor agreement, which we're close to um, ratifying here with the, the developer, um, we're talking about local hire that provides good jobs for people in the community. We set an ambitious goal uh, for local hire initiatives, ensuring that residents and local people to the area have access to these jobs. But this, this project also um, supports um, future careers as well with our apprenticeship programs and our pre-apprenticeship programs, which puts young men and women to work on projects just like this. So I'm standing here today asking you to approve item number 4A, the revitalization project. We're looking forward to getting the work, ready right to the work. Good night. Thanks, sir. Furla Lambert. <laughs> Good evening. I didn't come here this evening to speak, so I'm just going to talk. <laughs> <laughs> and some, I do recognize some of the faces. Some of you have been around quite as long as I have, almost. <laughs> I'm back to stay. Huh? I've been up in Havasu, Lake Havasu City very nice place except for my caregiver decided to leave <laughs> so I had mm. to come home and Kevin's taking care of me now <laughs> so I will be here and uh, want to get involved again and have you guys over for coffee and tacos in the front yard again and we'll have a discussion but I just wanted you to know I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> but everything looks very good, and I've heard nothing but good news so far. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next meeting. Welcome back. Thank you. Maureen Blackman. Joe and Berlin, oh, geez, no notes or anything. God. I have notes. My mom always said, write it down. Good evening, Mayor Jones, City Council staff. Um, I'm here to voice support for the new police facility and the moving of the relocation of the park. First, let's talk about the police station. As a grad graduate of the Citizens Academy, I've been th through the f police facility more than once. No amount of remodeling would get that station where it needs to be today, much less for the future. New crime challenges face policing today. We have people entering our country that might not be simply here for a better life. Maybe they're here to take advantage of us. We really don't know. But will our police force be able to stay ahead of what could possibly come? Not with that station. The flow of drugs, including deadly fentanyl, are all over our streets. You can't drive down Garden Grove Boulevard without seeing somebody passed out, a lot of times with the needle still in their arm. Do we have the resources to combat those crimes and those situations? Slap house, road raging, road racers, human trafficking? The streets have changed and so has crime. Uh, policing has changed. No bail DAs. Sorry to paint a dark picture. <laughs> this is the life we live. <laughs> um, no, amount, no bail DAs. Catch and release. No, it's not the time to take our foot off the gas. It's time to put it on. 
police officers have to select, be very selective of where they work. Policing is a dangerous job, more so today than ever. Garden Grove needs to attract and retain quality officers to keep us safe, the officers safe, and the city out of lawsuits. Omar would like that. We need to have the best and the brightest. We need to keep them. This will take a state-of-the-art facility, a healthy and well-trained police team, exceptional leadership, and competitive compensation. None of this comes cheap. It just has to be mandatory. Now the park. Here in Garden Grove, things takes time. Think of the rusty skeleton. <laughs> We're waiting 15 years. It's finally done. Thank you. Many of us are skeptical, especially with the size and project of the project of this size. Some have a that'll never happen attitude. We all understand that. Or they're looking at the park from the lenses of yesteryear. I can get that too. Change is hard, but my mom would say, you have to break some eggs to make an omelet. And that's where we are today. I trust this incredible team will finish, take us to the finish line with the least number of delays. And once completed, we'll look back and have pride at what we did. I say, go big, don't go home. <laughs> uh, Ruby Garcia, you want to come back? All right. Um, good evening, Mayor Jones, City Council, and City Manager Lisa Kim and staff. My name is Ruby Garcia, and I'm a resident here in Garden Grove, and also proud to serve as Commissioner for Parks and Recs for our wonderful city. I just wanted to come in and also give my support for the Civic Center and speak on how important I think the C Civic Center will be for our city and our amazing police department. This um, will especially be important for our community engagement. I can't tell you how much of a um, great tool this will be for community engagement and I'm such a cheerleader to just kind of bringing communities together, which I think is why the Parks and Rec Commissioner position really called for me. Um, I can see many opportunities it will bring to our great city. The space can be used for us residents to come together, um, plan events, and just really gather and be one in this new space. So thank you to all the teams involved for always keeping us updated and keeping us engaged onto this project, and we can't wait to see this all come to life. Thank you all. All right, that's all the oral communications cards I have. Anyone else wishing to speak? Seeing none, we will close oral communications. Um, at this time, we'll recess City Council and move over to successor agency. So, Madam Clerk, would you please call roll? Mem <clears throat> Member Breidegum? Here. Member Tran? Here. Member Dovin? Present. Member Klovenstein? Here. Member Winbinaloza? Here. And Chair Jones? Here. And Vice Chair O'Neill is absent. All right, we already did oral communications. Consent items, just receive and follow the minutes. Can I get a motion and a second? Moved. Second. All the vote. Motion received, six yes votes. Any matters? Seeing none, we will adjourn to Sanitary District. And in um, Councilmember or in President O'Neill's absence, I'll hand it over to Vice President Cindy Tran. Okay. Um, so the oral communication were already held earlier. Um, we're gonna. Okay. Oh, sorry. Roll call. <laughs> <laughs> Member Breidegum. Here. Member Dovin. Present. Member Klopfenstein. Here. Member Wynne Pinaloza. Here. Member Jones. Here. And Vice President Tran. Yeah. Okay, um, the oral communication was held earlier, so um, we're gonna go to the consent item. Back in. So, yeah. Motion received, six yes votes. Thank you. Um, do we have any matter from anyone? Okay, so we move. Um, so the next regular sanitary Sanitary district meeting will be scheduled on Tuesday, April 23rd at 6.30 p.m. Um, that's it. We adjourn. Thank you. Okay, we will reconvene city council. That takes us on to consent items. 
We've already acted on 3A and 3B, so it's recommended that 3C through 3I be acted on simultaneously unless anyone would like to pull the knife. Move to approve. I'll second. All to vote. Motion received, six yes votes. All right, items for consideration, 4A. Good evening, Honorable Mayor, members of the City Council. I'm honored to present uh, the item this evening, the Civic Center Revitalization Project for your review and consideration. I know our development team is being assembled to present the item as well. About a decade ago, we, uh, about, a dec ago about a decade ago, the Reimagined Garden Grove Plan was set the stage for discussions surrounding the vital role of the Civic Center area within our downtown. The passage, the passage of Measure O further solidified our commitment to enhancing public safety and infrastructure, providing the stable foundation and funding source that has led us to this pitiful, pit, pit, pivotal role tonight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow, that was horrible. I apologize. <laughs> I should turn it over to Chief Alfaro to finish this. <laughs> I will do that. I will turn it over to Chief Alfaro to finish and provide some additional opening remarks. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. Mayor Jones and council members, um, good evening and thank you for your time this evening on a, a historic period for the Garden Grove Police Department and the community as a whole. First of all, I want to publicly thank everyone who's been involved in this process. Uh, working with the team from Edgemore, AC Martin, and Clark Construction has been a, a pleasure. They have been phenomenal to work with. They've been engaged since day one. They've heard our voices and, and got our input, and it's been an incredible experience to this point. I also want to take a moment to thank all of our city staff who've been involved in the process, attending countless meetings, lending their expertise. I want to thank the city council for your unwavering support to our public safety building and the police department as a whole. And of course, I want to especially thank the Garden Grove community. Without their support, this new PD building would not become a reality. The new police facility will be a landmark within our community of safety and security. It will be a modern design that allows us to improve productivity, efficiency, and effectiveness by, by allowing all of our operations in one facility. Key work teams will be aligned and able to effectively communicate and connect with one another on a daily basis. Once we move into our new police building, the much antiquated and current building that we are in now will, we, will be removed and make way for a reimagined Civic Center Park. I am very excited to see how the completion of the entire project and how it will revitalize the entire Civic Center area. Again, thank you to the community for their steadfast support, and I promise them that our dedication, commitment to their safety, security, and service will be everlasting. I will now like to introduce Executive Project Manager Craig Beck, who is going to provide an, a project overview for you. Craig. Thank you, Chief. If we could put the PowerPoint up, please. Okay, fantastic. Well, good evening, Mayor and Council Members. We're excited to give you an update on this project. It's been in the works for a number of years, and we have a quick overview of some of the work that's brought us to this date, and then we have a design update to share the latest information we have on the design and kind of go through the construction schedule with the team. So first, I think it's always important to reflect back on how did we get to this point. And so there's been a number of different exercises done from a planning perspective in different documents over the past 10 years that have really informed where we are today. Uh, one of the most important uh, documents that, that have shaped us moving forward is the Dewberry Police Infrastructure Needs Assessment Report, which not only looked at the needs of the police department today, but also the future. And that became kind of the backbone for coming up with our basis of design. So this project is essentially split into five phases. We're currently in phase three. Phase one was that uh, program optimization, kind of looking at that Dewberry report and making sure that it is aligned with today's needs and today's uh, opportunities. Then phase two was a market sounding, really understanding what the development community would be interested in to bring this project forward. And as mentioned, we're in phase three. Uh, we're roughly at about 75% design drawings. The goal is to get those finished in the next month. And then we would transition through um, not only finishing the design drawings, but financial close. And then we would start construction of the first component of the project in phase four. And then phase five is the park. 
So to tackle all the effort to get us here, we divided the working groups into five different focus areas, design and construction, entitlements, permitting and community engagement, project financing, commercial legal, and then building commissioning. So I wanted to highlight a couple things for you this evening um, with respect to entitlements and permitting. Uh, not only did the Planning Commission approve the entitlements and the CEQA document for this project, but we've done a lot of community touch points, over 3,500 direct connections with the community here in Garden Grove. And then most recently this month, we had two different park events, the Art in the Park, which was very well attended, and then also the Clementine Trolley event and a small business outreach event was held on the 5th where local small businesses and contractors were able to engage directly with Clark team and understand opportunities for procurement. And so I would like to announce that Clark has hired Southland Industries, a Garden Grove business. So mm -hmm. it's kind of the first Garden Grove business gonna be part of this construction project and we're really excited to announce that tonight. So from a commercial legal perspective, the team has concluded negotiations with Edgemore on a project agreement. And I just wanted to highlight a few key points on that agreement. This is a design and construction agreement where they'll finish the design and then construct uh, both a 103,000 square foot police facility, a four level parking garage, and then the Civic Center Park, which consists of about 2.7 acres. We are focused on a sustainable design. This will be a certified building at LEED Silver or higher. We're hoping for gold, but uh, certainly at LEED Silver. And that not only uh, shows or, or sends a signal to the community that Garden Grove is serious ab about uh, energy efficiency, but it, it also helps with the long-term cost of this building. So the operational cost for the building will be lower because of the sustainable um, components that will go into this facility. This is an important facility, not only for Garden Grove, but for the region. And so we want it to be earthquake resilient. And it is designed to an essential service facilities level, which is a state standard. And this is um, going to be designed to a category four. So the, the structure of the project is um, set up with a guaranteed maximum price within our affordability limit of 152, meaning it will be delivered for that price under a GMP contract. And I, I wanna point out, uh, I think the council's familiar with this from previous presentations, but this is an open book cost review uh, project agreement where the city's third party cost reviewer will be looking at all of the uh, cost in the budget and ensuring that the city's getting market value for this project. Uh, the city will be uh, taking the lead in financing project through lease revenue um, financing. Uh, which we'll talk about in a minute. And I think one of the speakers from the building trades talked about the project labor agreement, which will include local hiring. So just real quickly on project financing, consistent with the item, the resolution that was passed by council in November, uh, the team is moving forward with uh, finalizing documents for $140 million worth of bonds to be sold. And then that will be enhanced with $12 million worth of cash that have been set aside for this project already. So $152 million is the affordability limit. As mentioned, the city is financing it. Uh, all of the financing team is in place. Uh, we're working with Fieldman Roll Up Associates with his, has a long-term financial relationship with the city. They've been our advisors for a number of years, as well as Stradling, uh, who's bond counsel, and the city's had a, a long-term relationship with Stradling as well. And then Stifle was selected as the underwriting team. Um, there, uh, once the construction drawings are done, which is anticipated late this summer, early fall, there will be a cost true up. So we'll ensure that we're setting that GMP based on final construction drawings. So at this point, I wanna introduce uh, Brian Dugan from Edgemore, who's going to go through some slides for his team. Brian. Yeah, thank you, Craig. And good evening, Mayor, members of the council. It's great to be back here again. Uh, exciting evening, big milestone tonight. So thank you again for having us. You can go, I don't have a clicker, Craig, so. Okay. Who's got the clicker? <laughs> uh, next slide, yeah. I'll just use the old next slide. Uh, but first of all, <laughs> I wanna thank everybody who's in, that has been involved in this project. It's been an incredible experience uh, from our team. I think heard a lot of nice comments from the city's team, but really wanna thank 
uh, Lisa, Craig, Grace, uh, the city's entire project team, the commercial teams, the financing teams, the technical teams. It's been just an awesome experience, I think, for everyone involved so far. A lot of folks, when they saw the schedule that we put together for a six-month ENA period, uh, thought it wasn't achievable. And I'm really proud to be standing here uh, today with a negotiated project agreement. Um, also want to thank the chief, thank the police department. Been a great experience working with your team. The amount of time that you've lent our design team has been incredible. And just seeing how that team has worked through iterations of the floor plan to arrive at you know very operationally efficient building that we have today. Uh, very cool to see that play out. Um, want to thank the council too. I know you're tired of probably our briefings and updates on the project enough, but uh, really appreciate the time that you all have lent to allow us to update you on the project throughout the entire process. And then finally, I want to thank our team. So the team has worked uh, incredibly hard. I know a lot of folks' holidays were destroyed over uh, December, but it's, it's really helped get us to this point, and it's been a fun project to work on for everyone involved. So just reintroducing you to our team, I know you all met the, the group, but we've got Edgemore as the developer. You want to just go back one. Clark Construction is our design builder. AC Martin's our lead architect. Roth Shepard Architects is really our law enforcement designer. They're the public safety facility experts. HKLA is our landscape architect. Rick Engineering is our civil engineer. Bueller is our um, structural engineer. Glumax our MEP. And then we have Beleza for lighting design. And then the next slide, this just kind of shows you how robust this isn't the entire team. This is just headshots from some of the key individuals working on the project from our side. Uh, but it's really been a team effort and excited to be here. And now I will stop talking and let you all hear a little bit update of an update on the design. So thank you again. Thanks. Thank you. Mayor, members of the council, thank you so much for your time this evening. Before we get into the design, I just want to echo some of the things that Brian said. It's really been an honor and a privilege working with this team, with getting to know the city of Garden Grove and the community and the police department. So we're really excited to show where we are from a design perspective. It's been a very collaborative effort, and we're really proud of where we are today. So really excited to share it with you. Um, so that being said, we want to start at the beginning. Um, when we first got the task of a six-month ENA period with a program, you know, we wanted to set some guide, guidelines and guideposts for our team as we continue to develop the design. So we knew that we were building a police building, a parking structure, and a park, but what does that mean from a design perspective? So we knew some of the key principles we wanted to adhere to as we were developing the design are operational efficiency, maintainability, a campus style site, really making sure that the whole area feels interconnected and can be used by the community, um, as well as a statement building. It's on a very prominent corner in Garden Grove on the corner of Euclid and Acacia, and we want this building to stand out in the best of ways and be something that uh, the community is really proud of. So as we've been designing, we've been keeping these principles in mind and with the hope being that these outcomes are really the things that we want to come to fruition. That's a connected community. We know how well that the site is currently used by the community. We want that to be maintained. Um, we also want increased productivity, retention and recruitment for the police department, as well as long-term affordability. So those have really been the things that have been driving us as we've been developing the design. Um, just as a reminder, this is the site that we're looking to develop, which is currently where the police department sits as well as the current Civic Center Park, um, just north of City Hall and right next to this building right here. Um, at the beginning, we really started with what's the best way to use this site? Um, it's a nice size site, but it's not humongous. So how can we best manage the massing of the building, the parking structure, and maintain site circulation as required? So we looked at several different options. And in November, where we landed was on this, this massing and this site layout, which was a building that was parallel to Euclid uh, and a two bay parking structure that really sat nicely on that corner. We also looked at a preliminary facade design, um, which was really just honing in on a unitized curtain wall system. Since then, we've been progressing the interior and exterior development of the building. On the interior side, as Chief mentioned, we've been talking, speaking a lot with the police department, understanding first the program, making sure it worked for the PD, and then adjacency diagramming, looking at how does the building operate, where do different departments sit, how do they relate to each other, and making sure it works in an operational way, especially one of our key principles being operational efficiency. 
So once we got to a good point with the adjacency diagramming, we spent a lot of time with the full department really getting some good feedback from PD, and we've taken that, P that, that feedback and have now been working on floor plans. Um, we've also been integrating to the parking structure, so understanding how the parking structure can be best operationalized for the PD as well. So it really is a really well-oiled machine as these two structures are really working together. On the exterior, you saw an, an initial conceptual conceit. We're excited to show you the developments that we've, we've been working on since then. But we've done material studies as well as budgeting exercises to make sure that we can deliver this iconic building for, within the affordability limit. Um, so you'll see some advancement on the facade. Um, and we've also really just started looking at how we can conceptualize this park. Um, so we have some great ideas and things that we've been looking at um, as we develop that. As I mentioned on the interior of the building, we were looking at programming and adjacencies. So I just wanted to highlight one of the tools we used really early on um, to help work with, with the PD quickly to understand how does this building gonna operate. So each of these colors represents a different department and we probably went through over a dozen different iterations of these trying to understand what should be on the first floor, what should be on the second floor and how does it tie into the, the parking structure. And so this can, this you can see where we are now, which is very preliminary floor plans. I want to highlight some specific areas for the public. So you'll see the lobby there on the bottom left is right at the corner of Euclid and Acacia and will be very well marked so that the public knows how to get into the lobby. And then it's also right next to the community room. One thing that I did not mention, and Tammy will touch on it a little bit later, but in that little alcove on the, the south side of the, of the building is where the police memorial is. So we thought it was really important to make sure that it had a prominent location on Acacia, but it was also in view of the community room. So we were really cognizant of how we could bring that memorial in and make it, make it tie into the building. And then just at a very high level, you can see the second and third floor. Just to note, um, the bar, bar portion of the building, which is sort of the north-south piece, that is three stories. The connector piece between the parking structure and the bar building is only two stories. And with that, I will pass it over to Tammy Zhao, who's our lead architect, and she'll talk a little bit more about the facade development. Good evening, everyone, mayor, council members. Uh, it's been a, an intensive six months uh, <laughs> so far. And uh, you know, in, in intertwined with working out the design, we've also spent some time in your city attending events like Winter at the Grove, the Clementine Trolley event, Art in the Park, and we're looking forward to attending the Police Memorial on May 16th this year, really. And so these are some of the photos I took from Winter at the Grove. And what's really striking, and congratulations, you have a really diverse functioning, high functioning city where the citizens show up and they support yeah. the city events, not like where I live, <laughs> but it's really impressive. And, and this is a city that uh, works well, uh, supports the police, funds, chooses to fund the police where the rest of the country is thinking otherwise. It's just kind of sad. Um, so really, uh, we want this project to be something that you are all proud of and something that's welcoming to the community, uh, represents the community, it's like a beacon, it's iconic, it's a building of our time where everything else in Orange County is kind of from the 70s and 60s. So really, the basic parti, or the basic idea about this building is that the glass, it's a glass box on top of a solid base. And just looking at how your citizens will sit shoulder to shoulder with GGPD at th events like uh, the police memorial every year is really, really touching. So we wanted to add an element uh, to the design, a ribbon, uh, which represents the fabric of the community. So it, it, it's that piece, the white piece in the diagram that weaves uh, and encloses the, the prominent facade on acacia and weaves into the public lobby. And then it hits a crescendo with a tower element, which is the stair tower that's very visible from the corner of Euclid and acacia. Uh, so next slide, please. So the next few sl slides are uh, our latest renderings. This is a view uh, from the corner of Euclid and Acacia. Uh, so really, the glass product that we're looking at at the front door is very transparent because you want the heart of the PD uh, to kind of glow warmly uh, to the community from that corner. And then you can kind of see the party where it's the glass box. It's the, the glass with a slight blue greenish hue sitting on top of the solid base. And then you can see the tower element, which is 
technically stair number exit stair number two. Uh, next, <laughs> <laughs> next slide. Uh, this view is if you're standing, you just left the front door of City Hall, and you're looking across the street, and what you'll see there uh, is the front door to the left, and then you can see the ribbon uh, kind of caressing the building at the second floor, and just right front and center is where we're placing the police memorial. Um, so we'll bring the statue over, we can bring the plaques over. Uh, that piece right in front of the base of the building uh, is a wall that's made out of basaltina, which is a volcanic rock. It's solid, it's refined, uh, and it's tested, proven, and strong, just like uh, the, the police officers who are represented on that wall. Uh, so, uh, so you can see that this, this is gonna be the new place for the police memorial plenty of area and it can still spill out into the street like it does today. Next slide. Uh, this is a in progress view of the ribbon weaving into the building, into the public lobby. So imagine now uh, in this view, you're standing, you just went through the front door and like, wow. Uh, you're greeted with a public counter uh, from the records folks who will greet you there. And then you see the ribbon uh, with fritted glass weaving through it into the stair tower uh, off on the left. And I think that's where mm -hmm. I'm gonna stop talking and ask Christina to continue. Thank you. I'll talk a little bit about the park. Um, as I mentioned earlier, this is still very early in development. Um, but what we wanted to talk a little bit about is, you know, at the very beginning, we talked about the conceptual conceit of what this park would be really a flower blooming to represent Garden Grove. So on the left-hand side is some of the concepts that we've been thinking about and how you tie different parts of the community into this park. Uh, and then on the right, it's a, how you could see this come to life in a, in a site plan. So um, what we wanted to focus on were a couple different things. So we've gotten a lot of feedback from the community on the park and some things that are important. We're still parsing through a lot of the comments as we finalize the design, but one of the things that really came to mind was a memorial grove. We do understand there are several memorial trees in the current Civic Center Park. We want to celebrate that. So we've been looking at an opportunity to create an area of respite, an area of reflection within the, the new park that will be a memorial grove where there can be plaques, area, benches, places to, um, places to sit and places to be meditative. Um, so you can see what that, what that could look like on the left-hand side is how it would look shortly after opening, and then you can see once it matures how beautiful that grove can be. And then we also know that an event space is important. So looking at creating a large area where there could be pop-up movies, food trucks, other events, and how we could support that in this park. Um, and then it can just be activated on any given day with the community members coming to, to enjoy the greenery in the space. We also know that um, exercise is important, so we've been mapping out different exercise routes throughout the park um, and put, thinking of ways we can incorporate the exor exercise equipment throughout so that people can really get some activity out of this. And then just from a bird's eye view, this is how it could look in a couple years when everything is, when everything's all done. So really excited about the, about the progress here. And I will pass it on to Mark Hussey. Good evening, Mayor Jones and the council members. I appreciate the opportunity to be here this evening. My name is Mark Kersey. Uh, in the picture earlier, I had hair. Uh, over my 35-year career of leading work for Clark Construction, I somehow have left it behind. But anyway, it's my honor to be here, not only representing Clark Construction, but I'm also a 20-year resident of Garden Grove. In the height of COVID, uh, my son with special needs evacuated our home and was saved by the police department. I was able to share that story with Chief Alfaro early in the beginning. So it truly is my honor to be able to give back in this way in revitalizing and bringing forth this project uh, to the city. So on our schedule, uh, as was mentioned earlier, we're right in the midst of the design phase. And the beauty of design build is we get to start construction before the finality of the design that'll happen uh, later this year in September, uh, but we'll get the work started as I'll represent here in uh, just a minute. Several phases of the work, of course, the new uh, police facility is the primary element with the parking structure in phase two, as Christina said, with the build out of the park. And then of course we maintain the fire department building in between. There'll be some work out 
on Acacia uh, with infrastructure, et cetera. The schedule uh, has us building the project in 22 months, uh, and I'll go through a brief animation here in just a minute so that in the spring of 26, two years from now, you all will be able to move into the facility, the brand new built facility, so very exciting. All of the decisions made in construction that Tammy talked about, um, we very intentionally uh, picked elements that could be produced very quickly. So I'll talk about that here in just a second. So we've prepared a brief animation uh, of the build just to kind of bring this to life for you a little bit. So let's go to that animation. So here starting in late spring and into the summer, we'll set up the site fence around the perimeter of the uh, PS building. Let's see, is it, there we go. So you'll see the fence start to surround the area where we're building the new police headquarters as well as the parking structure. Then we start to grade the site and prepare the soil for the shallow foundations that will ensue. You see that starting on the parking structure. There's probably 15,000 cubic yards of concrete from a ready mix supplier just down Euclid in Fountain Valley. So very close in terms of material. All of this is cast in place structure, the four levels of the parking structure and the three of the uh, public safety building all in cast in place uh, features. Then once that's done, a year from now, we'll be topped out. Then the unitized curtain wall will be fabricated off site, brought and erected in place, put in place very quickly. And then we'll wrap up that phase of work with all of the site work, getting the interiors done, the rooftop units set, and again, two years from now, ready for occupancy. Then we move to this next phase of the project, which is demolishing the old police building. I'm sure there'll be some cheers about that. <laughs> uh, so that will be removed and then we'll grade the site and get ready for this beautiful new park that Christina went through earlier. Um, so that in the uh, spring, early summer of 27, the entire project is complete and turned over. So very exciting. That's a very brief snippet of uh, an animation that just, as I said, brings it to life. So Thank you. Uh, we appreciate the opportunity to present our, where we are so far and where we're headed. And we'll be breaking ground here very shortly. Thank you very much. So I just wanted to briefly touch on the next steps. So the item before you tonight is approval of the project agreement. With council's approval, we would move into our start of our pre-construction phase. And as Mark mentioned, we would kind of phase in that, that fencing of the area and we would start our pre-construction work in April. Um, project financing approval would come before the council April 23rd, that is the plan. And then we're targeting a groundbreaking ceremony on May 14th. Um, when that happens and we achieve financial close, we would issue a notice to proceed about June 7th and then expect the expanded site fencing to happen June 10th, which would thereafter start the rough grading. So that concludes our presentation tonight, Council, and we're ready to answer any questions you may have. Thank you all for the wonderful presentation. Um, Colleagues, this is an item for consideration, not a public hearing, so we can go ahead and deliberate. So, Joe. Uh, excuse me. Uh, can you guys stay for a minute? Oh, sure. Um, just a couple of comments. And, and first off, thank you for the review. I talked to all of you. We had an hour long discussion. Just want to highlight a couple of points that uh, for the parking, we were trying to find some parking for the public. So, keep working on that. And, uh, I like to um, keep some of the options available for future development. So I know it's a lot to ask for you to stay within budget, 152 million. It's 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 not a, not a lot for all you're doing. Um, but uh, at some point down the road, we may have more budget to develop more. So if 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 at all feasible, after we get everything approved and start building out, and there are things that you would like to offer future for future development. I'd like to see that as part of like an option package. I, I know it's a bad comparison, but like you're buying a car and I don't want a base model. I want, I want maybe something <laughs> more of an upgrade and not necessarily in this budget, but going forward in the future. For example, um, our city hall building and the new public safety building, uh, we still have the pedestrian crosswalk in the middle, but I, I would like to see a sky bridge 
myself personally to connect that space because we're, we're, you were talking about the interconnectivity. So I, I, I see the street being kind of a, a, like a river. That's, there's two sides of the river. And if we, at some future point, not in this project, but uh, to have options in the future that if we have find the budget. And remember, we're also looking for private donations. So um, uh, this is already funded, but in the future, we may call for private donors to add to the features that maybe we didn't get in this time, but we would like to, to keep those options available for future development. So please keep that in mind. I'm, I'm not trying to add more to your workload. I'm just saying if stuff, because you're gonna have to pick and choose what you develop, decide to build on, but then there are things that you like. Your wish list will be our wish list. We want to adopt some future features, and when we have the budget, come back and put those in. So that would be helpful, and that's the kind of thing I would like to see. Once it's built out, I'm probably off council, but the new council will come in. Maybe they'll find more money to develop it out better. And I love the park, and you know, um, some of our members went to Korea, Ang Yang, and you see they have a great Central Park. And they use it for pu public space, all sorts of events. It's, it's, it's wonderful. They had a drone uh, light show for us. And I'd, I'd like that kind of feature and event happening in our city right there in that park. So there's a lot of things. And we talk about bringing in festivals and food booths and so on. So we can have year-round events in that, in that space. So I love the design of that park. And I don't know about water features or ducks. But I like ducks. I like, I like all of the um, plantings that we can put in. And if somehow we can work into that. I know we've had residents who've asked for that public space to be accommodating of, of, uh, of um, the birds, and I like that too. So if any, any way we can work that in, um, that would be great. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> yeah, um, awesome job, everyone. Seriously, I really, really love it. And I know we discussed uh, uh, last week some of the things here um, and I concur I, I think the Joe Dovin uh, sky bridge would be a good uh, kind of thing. the bridge to somewhere the bridge to City Hall anyway with that being said um, I, we did have a speaker earlier today and I have heard from other uh, folks who you know would really like to see a water feature of some type in that park um, if it's conducive to ducks um, or not I don't know but you know, some kind of a water feature, I think, is uh, would be a nice, nice touch for that. Um, and if the ducks can use it, better off, right? So, um, but uh, you know, I, I literally had two ducks spend the night in my pool last night. <laughs> they, they, I walked out there, and the two ducks are out there quacking along. My dogs chasing them around the pool, and the ducks wouldn't leave. They're like, eh. So, but uh, anyway, I, I think you've done a very good job. You're you're keeping this in a budget that we can afford which is very good and, and I do like Joe's idea you know if there's some options it'd be nice to know um, so that's it yep. well I remember um, months back when we started taking the tours of different police stations and having those conversations about what we were hoping this to look like and the good and the bad and it was such an eye-opening process and really educated me on just what this whole process was going to look like and the timeline has been so robust and it's incredible to really see all of these steps so with such precision be met on time and to get us to where we are today and I really think that um, not only is this a historic project for our Garden Grove Police Department but for our entire community really a legacy project for uh, Garden Grove and I think that when we talk about the word collaboration which is probably overused I think this is such really kind of a shining example of what that really means when you can have shared visions and shared goals and then really be able to execute them when you have people all coming together on a team and that's our city staff, our council, our police department, our community, that's some, an amazing synergy. And so I just think it's congratulations to all of you. Truly, this team has done an incredible amount of work. Um, the scope of this project is just amazing. So I think it's, this is a really historic evening for, for our city and, and for all of you. And so I just want to thank you. And I can't wait to see a shovel in the ground and see this come to fruition from the police station to a brand new park. I know the community's excited. I'm excited. And again, thank you all so much. Thank you. I have very um, kind of similar with council member um, Stephanie Coffinson mentioned. Um, we have so many meetings, right, from the beginning. But every time I have comments or concerns, 
I brought it up, you guys respond, or you respond at the meeting after. So which is amazing because you know you listen to what we ask or we request in a way. And um, also some of the things that you mentioned earlier about um, it's gonna be something that represent our city welcoming. And so, um, and then there were so many of the community engagement. So everybody got to be part of this process. And so that's what made me feel amazing about it. And you already said it's, it's a big project, but it's a fun project, you know, all around. So I just want to say thank you very much to everyone, and especially, you know, Lisa and Greg and Greg, uh, 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 Grace for working on this project because I know that every time we had a meeting, you guys start a meeting and talk about something, and then make me, you know, kind of get more curious and then want to be more, you know, involved, understanding. So. Um, we cannot wait to see you know, the groundbreaking and then see um, the building at the end. So thank you so much. Um, just one last thing. I know that the lady earlier asking about the pond, the, the duck pond, and I know that we talk about that too. So I'm not sure if anyone here would want to say anything about uh, how we're going to handle that, or is that not the uh, right time to talk about now? OK, OK. So we just move on then. Yeah. Thank you. After much deliberation with my lovely assistant, um, <laughs> I just have a few comments and then want to end it on a happy note. A uh, couple comments. I just want to stress the importance for me to have um, that PLA in place and ensure that we're having local hire um, veterans preferences if possible. And I also want to echo sentiments of having um, whatever involvement we can with our schools in order to support their pre-apprenticeship program. I know that I wish, I, I've said this many times before, I wish when I was in school, in high school, that I had been told something other than that I had to go to a four-year university and accrue a lot of debt because they left that part out. Um, and if I would have been, um, I my eyes would have been open to the possibility of being in the trades, I'd be living a much different life at this time. So I want to make sure that we're reaching out to our schools, um, however which way we can support the building trades in, in bringing up that youth to understand that there is other options for them. Um, so I want to stress that. Um, the other comment I wanted to make is, again, I echo some of the comments regarding the pond, if there's some sort of water feature, probably on a much smaller scale. Um, I know that we have that area with the trees for reflection, so maybe something in there would be ideal, um, since folks are equating that to tranquility and relaxation. Um, and one kind of silly but also very serious comment, um, we have a very not that I know this personally because I don't engage, but we have a very huge and thriving Pokemon Go community here in Garden Grove um, that completely takes over that area. And so I don't know who <laughs> at the Pokemon Go software company we need to contact, but we should somehow engage, let them know that we are shifting that area. Um, and however, I mean, I think that could even translate into like a big event when, when the park is open many years down the road. Um, and have that be activated because they do also bring a lot of business to the city of Garden Grove and I know that there's events that happen. Um, I don't know how that works. I don't play, but just that I'd flag that for everyone. Um, I know a couple of friends and residents here that are very active and they made a point to make that comment to me. So I wanted to address it on the dais and I'll end it with a thank you. I know you guys have worked extremely hard. I know we've had a several meetings. I want to thank staff for all of your work, and I'm just excited to see this happen for our community, and hopefully one day it translates across the street to City Hall. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's great to see that we're all fully aligned by the comments that were made, and I would like to uh, see this get under construction, get shovels in the ground as soon as we can. So with that, I'd like to move it. <laughs> Call the vote. Motion received, six yes votes. Right. <laughs> All right, ordinances presented for a second reading and adoption, 5A. Item 5A is the second reading of ordinance number 2953 entitled an ordinance of the City Council, the City of Garden Grove, approving an amendment to attachment 706.5 of the Garden Grove Police Department Military Equipment Use Policy, pursuant to Government Code 7071. Okay. <laughs> 
Motion received, six yes votes. All right, that takes us on to uh, matters. There's nothing listed, so we'll go around the horn. Uh, George, anything? Yeah, sure. Um, bulky item pickups, I just want to uh, re-emphasize uh, for all the folks that are watching this on TV, um, anyone in the city of Garden Grove, if you're an apartment, a condo, a uh, house, um, you know, living in a tent, whatever, you can call uh, Republic Services and they will come and pick up bulky items. The days of having to crawl out in the middle of the night and throw it behind a, you know, in an alley or something like that, you don't need to do that. If you have an old couch or whatever you got to get rid of, just call them and put it in your front yard or out on the street. They'll tell you where and they'll come take it from you. So um, it's a lot easier. It doesn't pollute our community. So please take advantage of that service. It's free of charge. They don't charge you a nickel. So just give them a call. They'll come get it for you. You can do that three times a year per uh, uh, resident. Um, Joe Hammer was here earlier today. We recognize him. Um, and he had mentioned uh, the service clubs in our community and what a great uh, addition and um, they've made to our community over the years. And I want to echo those uh, sentiments. Um, all of our service clubs in Garden Grove are, <laughs> they're just unbelievable at what they do for our community. And, you know, it, I often get asked, hey, how can I get involved in the community? What can I do to get, you know? And honestly, if, you know, you should think about joining a service club. If you live in Garden Grove and, um, you should think about it. You know, we have we have a great Elks group. We have wonderful Kiwanis group. We have the Moose Lodge. We have uh, the Masons right across from City Hall here. Um, we have Lions. We have Rotary. We have service clubs that will fit every possible need, and they contribute so much to our community, so much to our kids. A lot of them uh, focus on youth activities and helping the kids out. Um, they all have different missions and so you know you should consider joining one of those service clubs and lastly i want to welcome back verla lambert i know uh, oh there she is back there for for all you youngsters who don't know verla verla has been very active in our community for decades decades and she has and she has been uh, instrumental in improving our city in so many ways over the years. And uh, so anyway, welcome back and we hope to hear more from you, Verla. Thank you. And with that, I uh -oh. am done. Cindy. <laughs> oh. uh, did I wake her up? I'm sorry. <laughs> My voice is too. Just a couple quick item. Um, it was such an honor for me to represent our Garden Go City to escort Mr. Joe Hammer and uh, um, at the uh, Cypress College American Citizen of the Year. Um, it was just my honor. And so um, that first, and then the second one was um, I attend the um, uh, student contest culinary um, competition. Um, congratulations to our high school student. Um, council members um, Stephanie will give more information about that since the attendant Thai event. Um, and then two other quick one, there will be an annual excavator event on March 30th at 2 p.m. at Atlantic Park. Is it in District 3? So I just want to remind people. And last but not least, um, there will be uh, another bulky uh, pickup. Um, Lisa, can you confirm, was that May 11? at um, Garden Go Park. I will check on that for you. Okay, thank you. Um, that's it for me. Joe. Uh, thank you, Mayor and uh, Honorable Council Member. Today, I'd like to spend uh, my three minutes speaking to the three proclamations that came before us today. And uh, we're uh, saying goodbye to March 2024 soon and saying hello to April and recognition of uh, Donate Life Month also Arab American Heritage Month, and the Black April Month, all in April. Uh, first, I'd like to speak to the uh, Donate Life Month, and thank you to our ambassador who came and shared with us her very heart-wrenching and moving story. I have a very personal story to tell also. 
one of my brother-in-laws who passed away some 25 years ago was also an organ do donor. And we were told that uh, his heart was donated, um, his lungs, his uh, legs were even taken, and his eyes. And I always walk around for many years thinking if I run into somebody who got his eyes, because he had the most beautiful eyes. He, w he passed in a car accident at the age of 18. And um, anybody who has any experience with donating life would know that it's something very precious, beautiful, and valuable as the grandmother with purpose has spoken to. Uh, it's a way you turn tragedy into triumph. So thank you for all the donors. And uh, I also encourage people who got the benefit of the donations to speak out also to help others who are in need and who can really appreciate those gifts of life. Uh, second proclamation I'd like to speak to is the Black April uh, proclamation, which uh, I believe started um, probably way back when <laughs> or maybe you were still council member <laughs> and other council members, some of whom were Vietnamese American. And uh, I think uh, Steve remember when we had to gone through multiple drafts and ended up with what we have now, that's we uh, may have made a tradition to pass on. and. Uh, I encouraged uh, groups and people to come and accept the proclamation on behalf of the community. Unfortunately, um, they were, did not make the time or could not be available tonight, but I'll be happy to accept it myself on behalf of Vietnamese American in our community. The Black April Month Proclamation, and I don't want to make this uh, talk a little more longer by reading it, but I do encourage uh, the public to read it and please have it posted on our website, our proclamations. Uh, because I am a child of war. I was born during the Vietnam War. I was old enough to experience it. And it was very traumatic. So it's not just soldiers who suffer from PTSD, it's especially children. Especially children. And I was a child of war, but I'd rather be a child of peace. And that leads me to the last proclamation I'm talking about, the Arab American History Month. And uh, I know Nicholas Dibbs has spoken to the Gaza ceasefire and looking for peace and coexistence, peaceful coexistence. And I, I don't believe that I qualify to speak to it, but because it's an issue that's been raised here and uh, it should be agendized, I agree with that. Uh, but uh, there are many different sides to that, and, and I cannot feign ignorance because I am a child of war, and I want to be a child of peace, and I want peace in the Middle East for the Gazans, the Palestinians, and the Israelis, and everybody involved. So I, I urge you to support that if we could, and it's not because other cities did it. it be, it's because we have good people here. We have refugees. We have immigrants, we have a very diverse community, and many of us are products of war. We came here to the U.S. to find peace and democracy and freedom, all of which we enjoy. So we can, cannot, cannot forget people in other parts of the world who are suffering, who don't have the same freedom, who are hurting, who are in war. So uh, I speak my own voice of conscience for us to uh, commemorate our own uh, rite of passage, our own coming to America, and our own enjoyment our, of our peace and even prosperity here. So we, c we cannot turn a blind eye. We could not sp just not speak to it. And I think the United States have done the right thing by abstaining and allowing for the UN vote to call for a ceasefire in that conflict. So I'm in support of that, and I think we're, we're heading in the right direction. And the sooner that that war stops, the better, in my mind. So I'm with Nick Dibbs there, okay? We, we share that. We, we can't turn a blind eye, and, and I've spoken to this. And if staff can do that and somebody will second my agendizing, perhaps we can get something on the books and passed. Thank you. Stephanie. 
Thank you. Uh, Cindy mentioned the culinary competition that happened, I think it was a week or so ago. Um, that was Cooking Up Change. It's a program where uh, Garden Grove High School and other students amongst GGUSD get together and try to come up with menu items that they could then have uh, within their school lunches. And they have some very precise recipes that they have to follow, not only the cost, but uh, low sodium and different items like that. And so we had Bolsa Grande High School, Garden Grove High School, and what was the third one? Rancho Alamitos. And they all competed against some LA County schools and Garden Grove High School came in second place. And all the food was delicious and it was just a really uplifting and wonderful event. And it's neat to see these kids just flourish in something that they're passionate about. And in this case, it was cooking. So it was a great event. We had a very good time. Um, another thing I wanted to mention, um, April 1st begins GG Gems. That's our home beautification awards. So make sure that you get to sprucing up your homes and nominating uh, places throughout the community. That will go from April 1st through April 24th for nominating uh, your house or somebody else's on your block that maybe you think is uh, excellent. Uh, and then finally, rain is coming, so as your vector trustee, I would be remiss if I didn't tell you to make sure you dump and drain. Your Easter egg hunts may be indoors this year since it looks like we're, we're in for some wet weather. Uh, that's all for today. Thank you. Kim? Nothing for me tonight. All right. I just uh, wanted to briefly mention I neglected to share Councilmember John O'Neill's support for the Civic Center Revitalization Project, and it's great to see that we're all 100% unanimous in support of our police in the new headquarters facility. Um, City Manager Lisa Kim. Thank you, Mayor and members of the council. Um, just a couple of things. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem, I did confirm the next community cleanup day is on May 11th and at Garden Grove Park. And um, I also wanted to thank the council for all your support the last six months and the um, priority of delivering the public safety project um, is reached a significant milestone today. And I would be um, also remiss if I did not just mention that the city team involved in bringing this project forward from your IT director, Anna Rao, your finance director, Patricia Song, um, your Parks Director, um, John Montanchez, Bill Murray and his team, um, certainly um, Police Chief um, Alfara, uh, Community Development Director Nikki Wetzel, and um, Economic Development Director Ursula Luna Reynoso. Collectively, the team had um, made sure that any resources that was needed to bring this item forward today was um, a result of all of their participation and contribution contribution to that effort. So I just wanted to thank um, them for all their great work. And last but certainly not least, um, City Attorney Omar Sandoval in I mean, bringing this document forward. Um, there was some long days in bringing the project agreement today. So I certainly want to um, personally thank Omar for all, his, all of his support. Mm. General Counsel, any need for a closed session or anything to report out? Mayor, and we did have closed session uh, this evening, and there is no reportable action out, out of that closed session. And since I have the mic, I don't do this often. Um, I want to give a shout out to my better half, Mrs. Uh -huh. Sandoval, and I today are celebrating 30 years of marriage. Wow, congratulations. And a happy belated birthday to Mayor Pertan Pan. <laughs> All right, thank you all. Let's let uh, Omar get home. <laughs> With that, we will stand adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>